brotherhood. It's a special bond. Support is unconditional. No matter the differences or challenges, the other will be there. All brothers need comfort. They all need a playmate. And they all need a friend. We don't want to you know, neglect anyone just because they have, you know, a disability, and especially as my little brother. That's just things that, you know, any big brother would do for their little brother, you know, just to let them see something, experience something. It's very important for Jamars to, you know, have that love. When a lot of times people are talking about Jameson, I remind them of the two sons, you know, that we have two sons. Jameson and Jamars, I call them my two sons, not S-O-N-S but they're my two S-U-N-S, -S, my two sons, because both of them brighten my day each and every day. Jameson was born in Monroe, North Carolina. And even at an early age, Jameson was always active and playing sports. Growing up in Monroe, you know, it's just a country town. You know, a lot of kids that you grew up with were the same ones that you graduated high school with. Uh, basketball really was like my first sport that I started playing when I was six years old. And then uh, I got introduced to football when I was in fourth grade. Uh, ever since a little kid, it's been multi-sport, multi you know, just football and basketball. We knew early on that Jameson had gifts. And not only do we know it, other people recognize that as well. So he's always been fun to watch. But when Jameson was nine years old, Brenda and James Crowder expected another son, Jamaris, who was born with Down syndrome. My husband and I uh, found out that, you know, Jamaris would be, bo would be born with uh, a birth defect. They kind of gave us a, 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 an option, which it wasn't an option for us, um, you know, uh, to abort, uh, but it was an option for us. Jamaris is diagnosed Down syndrome and that's uh, developmentally delays. That entails, you know, many things as far as nonverbal, you know, he's not able to communicate. There's so many things right now that he's not able to do. We did, you know, mention it to Jameson. You're gonna have a little brother, you know, and at some point we did tell him, you know, the doctors are saying that, you know, there may be some birth defect. And I said, there may be or there may not be, but you're just gonna have a little brother to, to take care of. She just told me that, you know, he had Down syndrome. Being young, I didn't really understand, you know, because I was one of the little brother. You know, we're aware of Jamar's conditions, but we look at it like he doesn't have any disabilities. My mom treats him like they treat me and you know, like they treat anybody else. Uh, I remember the first time that Jamaris gave his first big giggle and he and Jameson were playing together, and we weren't the ones that got him to do that. Jameson was the one that was able to get that out of him. One of the biggest challenges with Jamaris's disability is communication. But the two brothers found a way to communicate through sports. Growing up as a child, Jameson just had the gift. He had the knack for the game, both football and basketball. A lot of times, if Jamaris was just home, he would just sit and bounce the ball, the basketball, but, but we felt like he had learned that from watching Jameson. I guess he watched me enough, uh, came to enough high school, enough of my high school games to, you know, see how to dribble. He's been able to pick up things, you know, because that's ways that he can learn. Jamaris watched his brother Jameson become a superstar at Monroe High School in both basketball and football. When recruiting time came, it was Duke head coach David Cutcliffe that noticed Jamaris. One of the first things that um, truly impressed me about Jamison, I've watched his little brother watch him play basketball. I'm there, the people are there. It's my, my one visit as a head coach to go, you know, visit with he and the family. He, he was locked into brother, which is where, right where he should have been. That's, that's, that's the priority. That's, that's the kind of young man that you, you want to be associated with your program. It probably sent a message to Coach Cutcliffe, you know, because wherever one is, you know, we're gonna have both of them. I felt that Coach Cut was a man, Coach Cutcliffe was a man of integrity. So, you know, it was exciting when Duke came. 
I always wanted to play in the ACC. And then Coach Cut, you know, I, I knew that was a guy that I wanted to play up under. I just felt comfortable with that, and uh, that's why I went to Duke. And everything, you know, it's pretty much played out how, how I planned it and uh, how I think Coach Cut planned it. Duke expected Jamison Crowder to become a big-time playmaker at Duke, and that's exactly what he's been. It is definitely a benefit when you can call, you know, a four-yard or five-yard play and look up and it goes for 75, 80 yards because of talent. But with Jamison, it has the ability to go the distance every time. Throwing it deep oh, down yeah, the middle. Got Jamison yeah. Crowder running free. Caught it at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Jamison Crowder. Jamison Crowder's greatest gift is total body control. Uh, on the ground, making cuts in the air. When he comes out of a cut, it's just so sudden um, that, that people can't respond to it. Two years ago as a sophomore, Jamison made one of the biggest catches in Duke history in the final seconds to beat North Carolina and to qualify for its first bowl game in 19 years. Takes the snap, looks, looks, oh. still looks, dumps it in the middle. Touchdown! Oh, touchdown! Jamison Crowder! Crowder! We love you! Uh, once I scored, I was just happy. And, uh, you know, it was a game when the catch against your rival. You know, that play did make an impact on our program. Last year, Jamison became a superstar with 108 catches for over 1,300 yards and eight touchdowns helping Duke to a school record 10 wins and its first ever ACC Coastal Division title. We have to get back to the ACC championship and we have to, you know, pretty much win it because, you know, we don't want to have a season, a disappointing season after you had a great season when we got, you know, pretty much the same guys coming back this year. So that's, that I think as a team, that's our motivation. You know, we got a taste of it last year and now this year we want to go back and win it. On every Saturday, no matter where Duke plays, Jamison will always have his most loved and loyal fans in the stands. We've always enjoyed having the opportunity to spend as much time together as possible. Every weekend is truly a blessing. We're heading to Durham or Winston-Salem or wherever. The deep ball looking for Crowder and he's got it inside the five. Dumps it underneath to Crowder. Jamison's juking and jumping and into the end zone. He goes for the touchdown. That's what he plays so hard for. When he can make those tight catches and plays, he loves it. <laughs> Wherever Jamison makes plays on the field, Jamaris is always there, cheering on his big brother. When we go, my family is incomplete if I go and Jamar is not with us. But just to be a part of everything that our family experiences, I can't have it any better. If he comes in, if we're there for the weekend, and no matter how many people are there, he's gonna say, where's Jamar is? You know, he's gonna speak to everybody else, and then the next question out of his mouth is gonna be, where is Jamaris? And then he's going to make his way to Jamaris. He's going to find him, and he's going to give him a hug. You know, I never really make Jamaris feel like he's not my brother or anything, or make him feel, you know, any different. You know, I love, I love Jamaris. I definitely care for Jamaris. He would probably say Jameson is the best big brother than anybody could have. Jameson's always been special with Jamaris, and I appreciate that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And like I said, I just appreciate that love that Jameson shows for Jamaris. And while Jameson dreams of playing in the NFL next year, he knows his brother will be with him every step of the way. Football is definitely my ticket, and uh, I want to hopefully, uh, you know, go to the next level. 
after this season and, uh, you know, have a successful career. Uh, it's March, you know, that's part of my motivation a lot of times, um, you know, being, uh, I know one day I'm about to be able to take care of Jamaris. I often remind Jameson, I said, you know, you're Jamaris' big brother. And when your mom and dad is gone, you know, you'll have each other. And, you know, I always remind Jameson, you take care of him. And I believe that he will, just because I know the kind of young man that he is. I feel that if I'm gone and Jameson is left as his sole provider and caretaker, then I'll know Jamaris will be taken care of.